The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, folks, I'm back. I'd like to uh, put some uh, you at ease. I did not have COVID, folks. What I had was strained vocal cords, and uh, I had to stop talking for five days, which is not easy. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm doing a little better now. And I want to try to go through this morning to what I think's happening. It was pretty clear to me yesterday, uh, Sunday, but, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't mean uh, it's going to be clear to everybody else, or maybe I'm not even clear. But this is the U.S. dollar index. We're going to follow the money. The one thing I'd like for you to do, if you listen to the radio show and you don't get the newsletter, is to get the newsletter this week and listen to John's Jameson description of what's been happening, because John really understands background conditions better than anybody I've ever met, better than any economist I've ever met, any analyst I've ever met. And he's always said that this thing is related to the U.S. dollar, the fact that there's just not enough T-bills to go around because the banks are scared to death, as they should be. And you can see here we had a potential for a beautiful ABCD here uh, in the uh, uh, dollar index, which means you had a really good probability of the euro getting ready to turn. Well, this is what's my description of what happened last night, because this is it all happened in, in sequences. It was very interesting to what happens. First, I wanted to, to bring up what we were looking at here in the euro last night. This was around, uh, oh, or I think, it, I don't remember the exact time because that doesn't really make that much difference here. So let's just take a look at this and uh, we'll take a, try to walk you through what I think is really happening here. Now, this is the euro. That's on a 15 minute because I get five days in. And I want you to see here, you know, you see we made the 382 rally here, we made the 382 rally here, and we made the 382 rally here. And I assume because of that double top, possibly triple top ABC in the dollar index weekly, that we had a chance here for the euro to actually hold up. Uh, that's when it was trading at 104. I mentioned that. Uh, you know, anything below 104 was not going to be very good. And boy, and let me explain to you what happened. You'll see it next, uh, what it means when these patterns fail. They do not take any prisoners. But this is where the whole game changed for everything. And this is follow the money. This is what uh, this is what uh, we talk about, these background conditions. The banks are just, they're afraid to do anything, and they should be. Okay, now you notice here, we, as soon as we failed there, with the first, you had the big wide range down. That was the first indication. But you're sitting right at the 61% retracement. 20 points below that, and bada bing, bada boom. What does it do? It drops another $1,500. At the same time, at the same time that we're doing this, and this is early in the morning, uh, we had a beautiful pattern uh, uncovered here in the NASDAQ. Let me just show you how, how it looked last night, early, when early uh, Monday, it was Monday, not Sunday. Get this up here so we can see it here. Here was the NASDAQ. It opened and rallied 220 handles going exactly up to the 382 retracement of the high that we made five, six days ago. Now, that in itself is not very good action because the S&P and the Dow, Dow Jones were approaching 61% retracements. The problem was it went right up to that 61% retracement, stopped dead in its tracks, and, and went sideways for three hours, at which time my data went out. Of course, I was asleep at the time the data went out. And then by the, that time, the market started to move lower and lower and lower. Once we were up 200 and some points in the Dow, once we got unchanged, it was telling you that it was most probably getting ready, you know, to roll over. Now, we don't always see these the way we'd like to see them, but that's how they react some of the time. Now, one of the things that most people are really interested in and that we hear at TFNN, especially anybody who listens to Tom O'Brien or me, we have a really strong interest in that gold market. 
And the gold market is related to the U.S. dollar because if the U.S. dollar goes up, gold is going to go down. The only way you're going to get gold to go up substantially over a long period of time is to have a weak U.S. dollar. And we're not seeing that right now. If we look at that last night, you'll see, and I haven't been on the show for so long, I, I talk about these things in the videos that I send out. But there's the, you can see the beautiful ABCD pattern we had here at 813. Okay, you've got a weak, uh, you know, you've got a really strong dollar. It can't get any higher than the ABCD, and then it starts to go down. You'll see the first 382 retracement there at 806, and now we went all the way down to 1766. Uh, Folks, pay attention to 1765. Uh, any of you that have ever listened to the newsletter, or listen to the newsletter. Hello, Larry. Have have followed the newsletter. You'll know that we've been watching this for a very, very long time, because that dollar index and the dot and the dollar so related to the to the gold market. That let me put this up to show you where we are, because we're getting ready to go to places that we haven't seen in a long time in the gold market. It's going to make some great buying opportunities. But here's where we are. You see the 382 retracement we had up here at that 830 something. Okay, there we made a new low this morning at the 78% level at 1765. That was the last price I saw, 1766, I believe. Very, very important that it sets there because if we break below that, folks, we're going to see another $100 break in the gold market very easily because it's headed down. It's got an ABCD. It's got a, you know, a really strong dollar against it. And it's got some really strong cycles that are telling you that it's headed down. So we want to watch that one very closely. Pay attention to the chart of silver because we just made this morning, we made a newer low than we did on uh, Sunday. And that was we made 1936. That's the ABCD pattern in the silver. I don't know how much lower we are than that, but these are not to be bought yet. They're very, very tenuous at best. So we want to be patient and see these things uncovering. By the way, folks, our guest today at the break is going to be Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. On Wednesday, we're going to have Shane Smolian, thewolftrader.com, who's been tearing it up. And then we also have on uh, Thursday, we are going to have Mr. Stan Harley. And then on Friday, we have Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly. And going into Monday, we're going to have the wizard himself of Naples, Florida, Norm Winsky will be our guest. Okay, back on to some of those other things that we're seeing here in some of these markets to give you an idea. The other one that was really, really interesting, folks, uh, from a, a longer-term standpoint was the crude oil market here. I'll get this up here to show you, and I'll give you a really interesting story that I know all of you that get frustrated would like to hear. So let's move this up here. You'll see this is the pattern we were looking at. You see we had the three drive pattern here uh, up there at that uh, eight, 10, 14 level. We had the break all the way down, all the way up here to uh, uh, 111.45 last night, folks. Put that put that in your in your. Uh, in your volume thing folks because uh, for for remember things because i actually i got stopped out there folks i lost 26 bucks at 260 dollars and then it started to uh, roll over let's uh take a little break here 877-927-6648 we'll be right back continue with crude oil of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Educating investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I'm going to be talking about crude oil for the next few minutes. You can see here this trend line that's right here. Each of those highs along that trend line was an exact 382 retracement. We're almost ready to go to double digits, folks, in crude oil at 99. We're at 10 uh, ten ten dollar uh, one hundred and dollars and eighty cents I believe I just saw the the beeper go off so we're probably going to get to that that ought to be some support I would think but we've come down from 130 we dropped 30 percent gasoline prices are starting to drop those of you that follow the commodity markets you know they've been absolutely decimated we've warned a little bit about that we tried the long side of corn into the report we lost 10 cents on that but to today Corn opened down seven cents and then dropped another twenty-eight cents to the exact seven eight six down there at that nine. Excuse me, <laughs> believe me, five seventy nine, five seventy eight, five seventy nine level. The low was five seventy one, and I said if I can't buy corn here on the fifth of July when corn is as high as an elephant's eye, I gotta buy it somewhere. So I bought it there, risking ten cents. Whether it's going to work or not, I don't know. It was up 10 cents just a little while ago, but it sold off with the rest of the market. There's a lot of selling coming in, folks. And part of the reasoning for that is I'll just show you, share a fax. <sighs> Time out, boys and girls. I want to share with you a chart from Bloomberg from Alan Bianco, who Bianco Research. It's one of the very best. You think it's going to be funny, but when you look at it, Take a little bit of time because there's a blue line in there that you need to pay attention to. Now, you see all this stuff here? That's everything over the last hundred years, okay? Now, you see that blue line that's right there, that really dark blue line? That's that's us right now in the stock market, folks. And that's only the third worst time ever, ever, E-V-E-R, ever. This is not good, folks. This is not good. This thing is going down big time. So be very, very careful in here. So that's my two cents worth, and I'm sticking to it. The other one that I wanted to mention to you comes from our good friend over in Austria, Cycles Research. I want to bring this up, and it shows you the statistics behind some of these things, just like the Al Bianco Research thing said. This shows it to you in numbers, and it shows you the number of times we've had these things happening. The market's been lower every single time. 
So these are odds that you want to pay attention to because it's beginning to look like some of the things that uh, people are being afraid of is there. Now, we looking, if you remember here, going back a long time ago, we talked about treasury bonds and treasury notes. Okay, now let's just take a second here and we're going to bring up the treasury uh, note uh, chart, I believe, first. Let's get it up. Yeah, here we go. And there's where we are. One second. The whole world hated these things, you know, 10 weeks ago. And now we've had a 10-point rally in bonds. There's the notes. Went right up to the 382 retracement of the last high. That was the high that we made on uh, Friday. We backed off uh, two and a half points in bonds, actually three points in bonds. They went back and touched it again today. So that's a very important 382 retracement. So it's going to be interesting to what happens. If we were in a monster bear market in bonds. We're in a monster bear market in stocks. It doesn't look good. So protect yourself, you know, the best way that you can. Uh, those of you that if you bought the coin today at that uh, 570, I think it was 579, uh, it's trading at 580 and a half right now. Put your stop, uh, you know, two cents above the high at 573. So only risk $350. If you're going to do that now, I want to show you just something that's that, that I want to give you one other th just idea of ABCDs because this is the ABCD on the daily chart for the Treasury bonds. You'll see we went up here uh, on the big move down, and now of course with stocks going down, the flight to quality is the bonds. We went up there and touched that same high today within about four or five pips, and there's a big ABCD that's very important. So we should get a good correction coming back in the Treasury bonds. That might hold the market for a little bit, but frankly, it's going to need a whole lot of help more than that uh, to keep this thing you know, going uh, on, the, uh, on the right side. Now, I haven't had a chance here. Uh, I did show you the uh, 382 in the, uh, the NASDAQ. Doggone, I'm way out, of, way out of line here just a second. This is where the whole key happened, folks. This is the in the morning of Sunday morning. Monday morning, we, we opened up here uh, on Monday morning, being closed, of course. Uh, here's Tuesday. But you see, we went right up to the 382 here. This was a 200 and some point jump here in about 15, 20 minutes, well, maybe half an hour. And then we spent, you can see there, it spent well over two hours uh, till nighttime came, you know, 10, 30, well, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And then the market started down big time. And we were trying to make a 61% retracement in the Dow Jones. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do it in the S&P. The S&P had a small Gartley up there at uh, the uh, 3850, 3849 level and then gave up, uh, you know, 80 handles. Uh, so the, those are just some of the things that happen overnight that you don't have, you know, very much control over. So that's what happened with that because it started to break down. Now, the, the reason why that was important – this has been the leader most of the time. It led all the way down and it's lead, it led all the way up till we got to those highs back in January. Now it's becoming the weaker one. And we're seeing you know, indications that it's happening to other parts of the area. Let's take a look here at the German DAX here for just a second. And we'll get this up here to uh, let you see this one here. The German DAX has been in a very, very severe downtrend. And you, know, you can see we're, we're just not bouncing, folks. This, this thing wants to go a whole lot lower. And, uh, you know, the natural gas prices over in, in Europe are going absolutely nuts to the upside. And the ones here in the United States, they're going anywhere but nuts. We've gone from $9 down to $5. And we're still, well, bouncing a little bit today. But uh, that's, uh, that's a really, really, really bad sign. So... Let's remind ourselves of that. And then we're going to take a look here at the FTSE so that you'll be able to see that up here. And we'll be able to get it. And uh, you'll see the FTSE also headed uh, south. So be careful, folks. These markets are going to get more and more volatile every day. And you've got to be prepared to protect yourself uh, on the backside of some of these things to uh, protect yourself and your capital. Because there's going to be some there's going to be some super great moves in here. Uh, as you can see now, here's what I wanted to show you. The last one I wanted to show you here is the corn market, and uh, you'll be able to see what's happened today. You'll see the space here today where the gap is. That was the gap down. We we closed at 6:07 on Friday. We opened here Monday, Tuesday morning here at uh, six dollars. Went all the way down to 5.71. 
The 78% level on the weekly chart was at 578 and three quarters. I bought it at 579. It got up to 590, and now it's back to I don't know the last price I saw on it or anything. It was uh, still moving down, but not too much. Uh, it's still trading it right about where I bought it, about 580. If you're nervous about that, folks, just take it off. I mean, I can understand that because I I get nervous too, just like everything else. But like I say, you know, we're in the middle of a growing season here, and these these crops are far from ever getting uh, completed. So we've got to be careful. Stay tuned for Jeff Huge Alpha Insights. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and I hope we have our good friend Jeff Huge on the line today. Jeff, are you there? I am here, Larry. How are you? Happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July to you. I don't know if you use the same uh, little poem that we have here. In order to have a happy fourth, be sure that you buy a fifth on the third. That was back in the days when we didn't have alcohol in Indiana. I never did any drinking, but that was a little joke. Anyway, tell the folks uh, what you're looking at here, and I'll be happy to uh, – I want to talk to you about this strategic risk allocation because you've been very bearish for a long time, and boy, I tell you, I don't anybody can be bullish here. My hat's off to them because – it certainly looks like uh, we're in for a, a period of uh, protracted downward movement, in my opinion. So what do you think, my friend? Well, I don't disagree with that at all. And as a matter of fact, as you probably know, we published our free newsletter, Huge Insights, 
over the weekend. And um, in that, we kind of outlined a lot of these themes that we're going to talk about today, uh, one of which, uh, you know, certainly is the fact that we've seen this downtick in our strategic risk allocation model, which really looks at the ratio, a broad ratio of stocks versus bonds. So, you know, a lot of people look at like the S&P versus the, you know, the aggregate bond index. What we do is we take a look at the S&P 1500 equally weighted, and then we also uh, compare that to the corporate bonds of all of those um, um, companies as well. And when, when the, the model line or that ratio line is going up, that means that stocks look more favorable than bonds. And when it's going down, bonds look more favorable than stocks. And we've kind of got this, you know, this model that triggers once we hit a certain level and we've hit that level for a neutral signal now. So in the first half of the year, stocks were down around 21% year to date. Bonds were down almost 25% over the same period. And so, you know, what we determined is that, you know, we wanted to be long stocks or, or overweight stocks versus bonds because they were outperforming. Now it looks like bonds are poised to begin to outperform. So we've moved to a 50-50 allocation because we think um, stocks are ready to roll over hard down and, um, you know, bonds should be the place to hide. Well, they're going to have to hide somewhere because I think they're getting ready to go down too, but Oh, you know, I can't get, you know, just look what's happened to commodities. Uh, I mean, this has just been truly amazing. Uh, I mean, to me, I, I'm, I'm just uh, totally shocked that we've been able to uh, see that. Do you realize just a few seconds ago that we went below triple digits in crude oil? We're now trading below $100 a barrel. Uh, I've been watching that. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, just kind of looking at the uh, September contract, it looks like the 200-day moving average comes in around $85, $86. And that's a big chart support level. So it would not surprise me at all uh, to see yeah. crude test that level. Okay. Now, the next uh, chart that uh, I'd like to uh, – oh, no, what happened? Now I've lost oh, – <laughs> hold on just a second here. I've lost my uh, – my, there we just I'm, I'm back now I, I can finally post the uh, chart that I want to let the folks see that you've got here uh, that is really interesting here they're all interesting but I love this one because it shows the state of the economy this is from the Federal Reserve I believe isn't it uh, Jeff it is um, the, the Atlanta Fed does something called the GDP now cast and uh, what they really do is they take all the data points that go into calculating GDP and they update them in real time as they're reported. And uh, as of effective Friday, uh, the 1st of July, uh, that model turned negative. And, you know, what's interesting to me is that first quarter GDP just saw its final revision last week as well. And it came in at minus 1.6%. And now second quarter looks like it's on track to post a minus 2.1% level based on the data as it's been delivered so far. Now, you got to keep in mind that at the end of the fourth quarter last year, we were annualized at 7% growth. So we've taken a complete nosedive uh, in terms of GDP growth. And a lot of that can be blamed on the fact that Inflation so high, right? Because headline inflation is what's infecting the affecting the real component of real GDP, and so um, you know we've seen negative growth. And as a rule of thumb, when you get two consecutive quarters of of um, you know shrinking economic output or negative GDP growth, that tends to coincide with a recession and has for every recession for the past fifty years. A lot of people will say it's a technical recession. We won't really know whether it's a recession officially until the NBER uh, informs us, but it's it's pretty clear to market participants, obviously, especially in the bond market, that uh, the economy is already in recession, at least a rolling recession. And so, you know, we've been kind of positioned for that and continue to advocate uh, investors kind of, you know, not ignore this and, and take it seriously because it looks to us like uh, things are about to get worse. Yeah, well, something's happening, that's for sure. We're seeing collapse in some of these uh, commodities, you know, sugar, beans, oil, meal. I mean, all of them, uh, corn, I mean, all of them just been getting hit really bad. Now, you've got a next slide is on your underlying inflation dashboard. Is it showing some warning signs here that maybe uh, that we could be getting a little better? 
Well, here's what's happened. Okay, since the last time I showed this slide, which maybe was a month ago, um, core inflation has actually gotten worse. Uh, it's gotten 50 basis points higher. We were about 290 basis points above that 2% Fed target that they call the neutral inflation rate. Now we're 340 basis points above it. So, you know, the problem is the Fed thinks neutral is like 2 to 3%. It looks more to us like it's 45 to 5.5%. And someone was explaining to me how, you know, the balance sheet drawdown and the Fed's planned balance sheet drawdown of about 4.5% this year, $400 billion, is also going to help tighten uh, conditions. And, you know, that's about, that equates to about 200 basis points in traditional Fed tightening. And so if you combine that with where, you know, the Fed is kind of directing us to believe, it looks like they believe 500 basis points uh, is, the, uh, is the neutral rate as well. And that's kind of showing up in their dot plot right now as well. Wow. Okay. The next one I'd like for you to take talk to us about uh, is your um, your monetary policy dashboard. What what are you seeing here? Well, what I'm seeing on the left hand side is that the uh, the odds market, or you know, the probabilities, as uh, as you know, kind of the um, CDOE's uh, Fed tool has put it, is about 82.6 percent that the Fed is going to raise rates by another 75 basis points in July. That's the July 27th Fed meeting, and only about 17% that they're going to raise 50 basis points. So it looks pretty much like a lock at this point that they're going to raise 75 bips. Um, if we look to the right-hand side of this chart, that's the dot plot. And those uh, you know kind of light blue dots are where the consensus among Fed governors is right now. And it's about 3.37% is where they see the Fed funds rate by year end. Um, now, that's another 175 basis points in, in tightening. So in addition to what we see in July, we could see another 100 basis points on top of that just to get to where these Fed governors are uh, putting their dot plot um, expectations, which happens to align perfectly with the Fed funds futures market. So the market and the Fed are now in complete agreement that the Fed funds rate is going to be about 3.375% by the end of the year. And then into next year, the Fed is actually looking to continue to tighten to around three and a half to 375. But the market thinks that the Fed will pivot and start to cut rates in 2023. The market's actually looking for something closer to 275 by year end 2023. Jeff, stay with us, please. I really love this stuff. We'll be right back with Jeff Huge Alpha Insights, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, and he's going to talk to us about earnings next. Well, you know, Larry, uh, I think earnings are the next shoe to drop. We're going to, you know, kick off our second quarter earnings reporting season in about two weeks with the big banks. And, you know, we think it's going to be a pretty ugly uh, scenario here. In fact, um, you know, we've been stress testing our S&P operating earnings model by adjusting assumptions to reflect uh, some of the things that we saw back in the 70s. We're kind of using the 1969-70, uh, you know, inflationary bear market and, and recession is kind of our, our base analog. And uh, what we learned there is that margins compressed dramatically and revenues came down dramatically early in the recession, which uh, ended up resulting in big earnings revisions later in the year. And so we're getting ahead of it. We cut our earnings estimates to sub $200. We're at 198 this year, down 5% year over year. The street is still at 229, up 10% year over year. And so you know, we're a full 16% um, to the downside from where uh, the street is. And I think as earnings are reported in the second quarter and forward guidance disappoints, we're going to see analysts on Wall Street revise their estimates sharply lower. And I think that the market has not priced that in. Markets priced in the change in interest rates and the tightening in the financial conditions. And the multiples come down from 22 times to 16 times. But, you know, that P.E. is only as good as the E, and it's still pricing off of um, these consensus 229 estimates this year. I think those numbers are – there's zero chance we're going to see that. I mean, it's a very, very low probability, and, um, you know, we think numbers will end up being sub-$200. Um, the work that we've done suggests if we're wrong, our numbers are still too high, and we're going to have to cut them again. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be pretty hard, I think, for earnings to increase. You know, that, that they don't have any incentive to uh, do that. Anyway, let's take a look at the next one. It's your advanced decline line. This is some of the things that I really like to see because it gives a really good idea of the distribution that's going on in the market. So you want to explain to the folks uh, cumulative advanced decline lines? I do. So uh, one of my mentors was Alan Shaw, who's uh, one of the you know top-ranked uh, market technicians oh. on Wall Street for decades. Uh, back in my Smith Barney days and Citigroup days, I worked with him, and you know I asked him one time, uh, what you know, what do you rely on to give you confidence in your market view? And he said, it's it's the AD line. It's it's the cumulative advanced decline line will tell me whether the market has bottomed or not by diverging positively. And, and what we've seen at this point is the most recent low, the June 17th low on the S&P, which was around 36, 38 or so, um, was confirmed by a lower advanced decline line, uh, both on the NYSE and the NASDAQ composite, which between the two of them encompass almost 6,000 different issues uh, traded in the U.S. Very, very broad measure. And, and what it's basically saying is that we have not bottomed. Uh, you know, that the breadth continues to suggest uh, that, you know, it's confirming the price lows and that these price lows are not 
um, uh, you know, necessarily finish going down. Wow, boy, they certainly look very interesting here. We haven't had a really bad capitulation day. We're down more than a thousand points in the Dow, and I think that's going to be coming. My prediction has always been for a move of at least sixteen hundred Dow points, you know, uh, during this move down. So whether that's going to happen or not, you know, certainly uh, remains to be seen. Now we've got another one that uh, is interesting here because it don't get much in the news about it, and that's about margin debt. And uh, that's yeah. got to be a factor somewhere. I mean, this is uh, well, it's going to be very interesting here. Speaks, it speaks to the amount of leverage in the system still. I mean, we're at $752 billion in margin debt still. That's actually well above the 2018 record high, uh, which was about $610 billion or so. Mm -hmm. And while we're down, you know, I think almost uh, 19, 20 percent below the record high of $936 billion, $752 billion is still a lot of leverage to take off the books here. And what's happened, and you can see in this chart in the lower left-hand corner, that that's how margin debt's uh, annual rate of change has, has been viewed over the last few decades. And it peaked actually in March of 21 at 71%, okay, which was the second highest peak in history, right? And it's come down, and it's now negative 12%. Well, when this rate of change goes negative, it tends to trigger or coincide with a very significant drawdown in the markets. And that's exactly what we've seen. But that drawdown tends to continue until that indicator goes positive again. And so I don't think we're done going down yet uh, and that there's a lot of leverage to be liquidated, um, you know, and a, large, a lot of margin calls uh, yet to be seen. Okay, now we're going to get to the interesting part. To those of you that like the Elliott Wave Theory and this young man certainly knows it as well as anybody I've heard of. So let's take a look at what you're looking at for your Elliott Wave counts, Jeff. Well, you know, all you of the stuff yeah. that we've been talking about adds up to one thing, and that is that uh, the market is poised for a much, much uh, deeper drawdown. And, you know, while I do concede that, you know, this bounce that we've seen off of that 36.37 uh, low that we put in on June 17th could carry further, and we've actually, on the right-hand side of this chart, we've illustrated one of the scenarios that we're considering is a, a pretty big bounce back up to around the 41 to 4200 range, which is a prior wave four. And if that happens, then we would concede that, you know, the low that we saw on June 17th was probably wave A down, and that that counter trend move, which is what it looks like to us today, would be wave B. That means wave C is yet to come. And we think wave C could carry the S&P 500 all the way down to 2250, which was around where uh, the market bottomed at the, you know, March 2020 lows during the COVID panic. And if we look to the left hand side of this chart, all we're really doing is retracing 61.8 percent of the 13 year advance off the 2009 lows. And so that's a standard sort of correction. That's very common, very typical at that degree of trend. And that would mm -hmm. coincide very closely with the 200-month moving average, which is usually where large degree, uh, you know, uh, corrective patterns tend to trade all the way back down to these longer-term 200-month uh, moving average uh, levels uh, to test mm -hmm. the trend. And so that's our working hypothesis right now. And we think there's a, a pretty good shot of that taking place this year. In fact, we think we could bottom on or about November 8th, which is uh, actually a major Montgomery cycle turn day and also election day. So that's what we're looking for if we had to put a, a date and time on it. Uh, do you have the time of the day of November the 8th with the bottom will be, or are we just going to have to be? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, hey, that, I, hey, I'm not I'm not being facetious at all. I'm trying to be funny because I've made predictions in the past that never even came close. So I'm the last one that, you know, that should uh, make any uh, 
make anything uh, now. Uh, show the folks how they can reach you, and uh, we really want to have you back on again soon, Jeff, because we love seeing your charts. Your work's been great. You've been on the right side of the market, and until that happens, you're going to be our guest. <laughs> hey, thank you, buddy. Yeah. We appreciate it. So why don't you uh, go to my website at www.jwhinvestment.com, and you can go to my newsletter and download the newsletter for free. And uh, we'd encourage you to do so. Uh, we actually have some, you know, membership perks where if you become a member, you get our top idea every week. And you can also follow us on uh, Twitter uh, at Alpha underscore Insight. Thank you. My Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Ta Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, we're back. I posted the chart of the euro up here. The, the gold hit the exact 78% level at 1765. We're now trading at 1769. Folks, uh, this, the gold is not going to go up until this U.S. dollar turns down, and it doesn't want to look to turn down right now. We're below 103. We're 102 and change in the euro. Uh, you know, the long-term weekly on euro goes down to either par or 99 so, my goodness, I think we have to wait and see uh, see some turn in the dollar index before gold will go. Now, it might bounce off of here, and it's a low-risk trade. Uh, I, I didn't buy it. I'm, I'm long the corn. It's about the only thing that I had on today. Tiny bit frustrated for Michigan. Tiny bit frustrated. God, if that's not the biggest crock of crap I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm very frustrated missing that crude oil move by just a little bit. Anyway. We'll, uh, we'll move on to the next thing. Tomorrow we're going to have uh, as our guest 
is going to be Shane Smolian, the Wolf Trader.com, and he's got some great stuff too. He's been incredibly bearish, the stocks also, along with Jeff Huge. And then on Thursday, we're going to have Stan Harley. Friday, we will have Tim Boston, and Monday, we'll have uh, Norman Winsky. So we got a good lineup of folks to give us an idea of what we're looking at. Keep an eye on the euro, folks. Keep an eye on the gold. If you're in the corn, and you bought the corn there at the eight uh, five excuse me, five seventy nine. Um, you know it's trading at five eighty two or something. I I flashed it just a second ago. Yeah, five eighty one and a quarter. Uh, put your stop down there at around uh, say five seventy five. You only risk two hundred bucks. And you know, with the with crude oil below hundred bucks a barrel now, we're down at ninety nine fifty three. I just saw across the TV over there. So. Uh, that's pretty interesting, too, so we'll keep a close eye on that. We might get a little bounce in the stocks, but there'll probably be nothing more than a 382 retracement, and I'd certainly you know, take a look at that because uh, it's going to be interesting. Remember, we're in the midst of a 382 retracement on the weekly charts in both bonds and T-notes. Now, that's another very, very, mark, very bearish market. We'll be seeing you tomorrow on the flip side. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. 